What up my freaks, Rowanus Insight here with part 3 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded. Huh, I didn't notice that there were uh, there were skulls here. Neat, they're always hidden in the fog. Anyway, modded uh, Lord Skrulk campaign. And so as we saw last time, we headed down to the Southern Chaos Wastes to annoy Oxyodal and have been pretty successful at it as his main stack appears to have been a little bit too distracted by the flaming scribes. However, while Skrulky was away and dealing with other threats, the, uh, uh, the Eatson Lizardman faction decided to take that opportunity to attempt to besiege Oishul. Sadly for them, they failed miserably, as there was just no way they were going to take a hard target uh, like Oishul without a lot better troops than they had. Even Soros not going to be enough for uh, taking those walls. Anyway, in terms of what we got to do this time, if we have time for it, we will attempt to take the uh, uh, take the Liber Bubonicus quest, as we now have a strong enough army, I think, to deal with whatever comes our way. Though we do have to be careful of the plague monks and we will hopefully knock out oh uh not oishal uh oxyodal rather for good and then head back upwards or northward uh, with scrolky to start dealing with all of this nonsense up here we still have to knock out the dwarfs as well as itza and there's a i'd say very high likelihood that we will eventually be forced into a fight with luther harkin we can't have him o occupying as much territory as he is and we also don't want him to leave vampiric corruption all over the place so, not much of a choice in the matter. Anyway, uh, let's see what we gotta do this particular turn. So, Skrulky doesn't need to move, but I do believe these two still do. So, what we'll wanna do is we'll pop you into an camp stance. We'll want to move you far enough away from this guy so that he can't move you over. Wait, are you blocking him? They don't appear to be. Alright, uh, you can go right here. Actually, frankly, this is a weak enough army that it's not even really a threat to you. Ah, well, you can't move any further anyway, so it doesn't matter. Alrighty, let's swap the units. La oh. You have... Okay, wait, wait, wait. You have nine free units. You have to get nine spaces. Meaning, we'll do this. And then we'll delete... And I guess we could delete two more. You have a clan rat spear unit, but it's going to be more useful than a Skaven slave. On the other hand, at the same time... Also, you're front line, right? Yeah. So you're actually a better carrier for the Skaven Slaves than uh, Ian Ro Roxborough is, so we might actually want to keep you around until we transfer these units to you. Ah. Alright, fine. Uh, let's do this, and then just to avoid rebuilding them... Ooh, wait, can you build Skaven Slaves in this territory? You can. And we don't have much in the way of Skaven Slave Slinger capacity, but we do have other capacities. Hmm. How much space do you have for building? One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven. That yeah, works for me. All right, so let's do this. Let's move you here, and let's trade you these. Well, they're getting bonus armor, actually. Now, on the other hand, we don't want them suffering attrition, so let's have the Skaven save suffer attrition. Like this. And I forgot what the count was now. Hmm. All right, take two more slingers. I right, do this, and then go here. This I made that needlessly complicated. And then we will build you one more slinger, and then just a pile of... Oh, no we won't, because they all take two turns. And never mind. Uh, we're not spending two turns here, that's for damn sure. Alright, just take whatever you can, minus one, two, three, four. Oh, actually you could probably use more of these guys. I like that. All right, like I said, I made that needlessly complicated, but all good. Uh, that describes the Skaven a lot of the time, anyway. All right, so you guys are going to stick around. Ian, you also have a point to assign. You have Pack Leader now. Hmm. We're probably not going to go for Life is Cheap with you, because you're probably not going to be commanding Skaven Slaves. We'll use uh, the uh, uh, the sort of Warlord Lords for that particular purpose. We I mean, could get you Ravenous Expansion... Actually, out of these, Ravenous Expansion is probably going to be the better pick here. A little bit of buffs for everything. As for your points, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to put into your army as yet, so we'll hold off on doing that. Next up, Knife. Our Warlock Master. You know what? 
I like the NK Swarp engines, and I like the fact that you now have movable mountain for defeating Gorok, so I think you shall be the Mutant. Uh, the Mutant is one of our community canon lords, uh, definitely once again a favorite, as I think I mentioned a last episode, or at least intended to, uh, who had some just absolutely incredible defenses uh, in the Ikit Claw campaign. As for who the Mutant is, he is a clone rat, or at least the Mutant is the original, and there are a lot of little mutants are running around clones of him that it could claw made because he was so impressed with him nobody knows who the real one is but the mutant is presumed to be the real one or at least that's what he says uh, though he has to fight all the harder knowing that he could be replaced at any point anyway uh you are going to get warp lightning and we should probably max this out since we're going to be spamming it just non-stop forever how much mana do you have? Oh, you actually have plenty. We could get a point in Scorch then. How is Death Frenzy? Is it... It's relatively cheap, at least the non-overcast variant. Hmm. It's a lot of extra melee attack and damage, plus the Warp Stone Scorch. Seems like it's a lot better in SFO than in vanilla. I might actually say Death Frenzy might be the better pick here. Let's double up on Death Frenzy so that we can use it as well as Warp Lightning. I'm just thinking it'll make the clan rats and the Skaven slaves fight uh, considerably harder. Then we're going to move you down here, Talkside. Away from these guys. The mutant will begin recruiting... Hmm, do we want to spend two turns here? Not much of a choice. Alright, we don't have a lot of money. I want to get access within the next couple of turns to the weapons dump, which will give us, or the next level of the weapons dump, the weapons burrow, or the weapons hanger, or whatever the heck it's called, uh, that will give us access to poison winds and death gloves. It is weapon burrow, which will go nicely in the army. What do we need for warp fire? Oh, wow, warp fire throwers are above in tier compared to death globes? They're on the same tier as poison wind mortars and gisales. That's what you're telling me, game. That's kind of shocking. I mean, I know that warp fire throwers are great, but that's kind of surprising to me. Hmm. I like to use them as a main line, but anyway. Uh, we'll get them. We'll get them as soon as we can. I love my fire units. Breeding pit, and we probably don't need to upgrade the clan armory. Now, we're getting a couple of these. We could get some shielded clan rats. Yeah, let's get like one, two, let's see, three, four. We need to over time replace these non-shielded clan rats anyway. I just don't want to spend a crazy amount of money on it. Hmm, we could get more Skaven slaves. We are out of slinger capacity, but no, let's build a couple more. I go for it. Might as well, uh, might as well fill up the army. And then talk side, you can wait here, essentially. All right, that looks good. Then what we're going to want to do is go for a chieftain. Just a random one. It doesn't really matter which kind. We're going to use you to go through the sea lanes. I suppose if we might keep you... Let's go for this one with the battle banner. There's probably better chieftain types, but they're really cheap at 108 upkeep. And honestly, if there was a better one here, I'd probably start leveling them. I was tempted to get a second one and pop you into the army. Maybe I should have put you there. Yeah, just get a second one. They're so cheap that I feel like we should. Uh, we will send, I don't know, this one with the Musk of Dominance to Kugath. And just so that I don't forget you, we'll name you Kugath Finder. We'll also probably send them to find Moors and Rictus, because we don't want to, them to get destroyed. Then, I really don't like being not being able to see where uh, Oxyodal is. So what we're going to do is we're going to trade you the Godless Crater. 105. Ah, uh, to bet we don't have vassalization capability, because, yeah, there's no way that you can afford it. All right, join our war against Itza, so that you don't force us into another war, and we'll go for the military alliance, because it'll give us access to allegiance, and it'll give us access to Zinchin units. Some of them will work fairly nicely with a few of our armies. I'm thinking cockatrices in particular to debuff enemies, and if we can get them, if we can get them the... Uh, the monstrous units would... Well, I mean, we have help at abominations. Hmm. I'll think about it. Anyway, uh, we'll do this. Yeah, we'll do this right now. And, ah, there's Oxyodal. All right, I just really wanted to see where his army was so that he didn't ambush one of our armies and destroy our newly acquired Plague Claw catapults. I assume this will also give us vision of Kairos. 
Let's see how he feels about us. Free Razor Standard. Uh, you know what? Let's get that Free Razor Standard and put it on Lord Skrulk and give it to those Blight Scab Plague Pack units. All right, we also have the Shroud of Drippin', dr Drippin' Death and the Razor Standard. Skrulk already has magic attacks, so we don't have to deal with that. Mm, we could put the... Uh... No, wait, these guys already have magical damage. Who needs magical damage? You guys already have it as well. Hmm, perhaps we don't need him on it. We'll keep the uh, Lich Bone Pendant for somebody else then. That's alright. Also, Shadow Magnet Trinket. I think we'll put this on... Uh, maybe not Scroll, but maybe one of these guys or somebody. I'll, I'll think about it. Anyway, that looks good to me. What else do we have here? Uh, we will not need the Storm Vermin for a while. Dusk Peaks, we can upgrade the Nest Nursery. And we can go for the food building as well. Public order ain't so great, but that's all right. We're generating food, and the growth is actually pretty good. Not as good as an Oishil, however, which is at nearly 500 at this point. This thing is going to grow so fast, we'll probably have a tier 5 by turn 40, or possibly 35, which is pretty insane. You don't even need to use food to grow sometimes when you can just stack growth to such an insane degree. Anyway, did we meet Kairos? I don't want him to be our enemy. He does like us reasonably well. He's currently at war with the Rapturous... Oh, he is at war with the Rapturous Excess. Uh, you willing to non-aggress? For 7.6k, it's a little bit much. Are you... Okay, you're not at war with the Ghost of Pahwaks and you refuse. We might have him declare war... We, or we might rather declare war on the Rapturous Excess with him, but I'll think about it. I'll think about it. For now, I think we're good. All right, took a little bit of admin to start the day, but uh, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Ooh, yes, outpost. Oh, they already have access to flamers, screamers, cockatrices, and warriors of chaos. That's beautiful. Most definitely, we are making some good use of that. Demon's Gate. And they have centigors, as well as sangors, shielded, armored, and reasonably quick as well. I love it. All right. Zinch, you might come in handy, and hopefully hold the Southern Chaos Waste without our having to deal with it down there. Anyway, let's end the turn. And let's see if Itza bothers to try to move back, and they do still have another full stack by... Yeah, there we go, Ura Ara has it. Mm, hopefully he doesn't go for Subaton, kind of making me nervous as to why he's here. On the other hand, I suppose we could just cancel the two catapults and attack his army with these two. Still a distinct possibility. You give him red eggs, what you want. You will attack us right now. Huh. Oh, he pe that's why he pieced out with the Tomb Kings. Fair enough, I guess we're going to have to bring him down. We were always going to come in and declare war on him, so and that's fine. I don't like how surrounded Oishil is by enemies now, but we'll have to deal with it. Hmm, the lack of armor piercing is going to be something of an issue here. But anyway, Kugath find or go find us a Kugath. Control plus one, a breeder, food generated one, growth plus ten, local province, local recruitment capacity, swell. Uh, Slaneshi corruption irrelevant, our Skaven corruption is so strong it allowed corrupted anyway. You can for now hold the breeder. You already have magic damage as well, I guess we could give you the banner of eternal flame since you're commanding our second main stack at the current time. We'll have to figure out how to deal with these guys, though it looks like you primarily have skinks in your army, which shouldn't in theory be that much of an issue. It does look like the dwarfs will be able to reach the sentinels of time, so we have to decide... Oh, we don't have the plague claws. Without the plague claws, it'll be difficult to deal with their artillery heavy army. And they will be able to reach Sentinels of Time if we let them. So we have two options. Either put one army in the Sentinels of Time, defend both. Hmm. We have nothing in these armies that will dish out enough damage to the dwarfs. Unless, wait, scroll key. Where's that other little army? Alright, it's right there. Let's see if we can't ambush it and destroy it instantly. If the ambush works, they won't be able to run. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, didn't work out. Didn't work out, but it, uh, well, it doesn't always work out. Go figure. All right, that's fine. You can stay there and chase after him and channel while you're at it. You two can keep following. In fact, I would like you to... No, we can't. Or can we? Nah, well, that's better not risk it. Uh, I think we can take a single turn of attrition. So you're going to go this way. It's got to be far enough away from this guy where he can't reach you. Go into range of this settlement just in case. 
And then you can follow along as well, at least for now. Alrighty, and Oxyodal has gone back to the Sinha monolith. Okay, so that works for us, and oh, he has a soul grinder. Huh, I wonder if his, this is his starting army. Does he start with a soul grinder? That's kind of interesting for a non-legendary lord. Good, good for you, sir. Uh, Metastorm, I want you to join one of these armies, but you don't have the movement to do so right now, so go right here for now. We'll have to figure this out. I think we have no choice but to at least attempt to destroy Ra'ara, so... Probably gonna cause us a lot of casualties. I don't have artillery. But I'm willing to bet we can still probably dish out sufficient damage, so... What we're going to do is we're going to, I guess, cancel the two plague clauses, as unfortunate as that is. Then we're going to have you lose the world's edge armor and replace it with the second helm of discord. One is on Slicen, one is on Toxide. Toxide's this other guy here, so yeah, let's take your helm of discord. The dragon helm is not, or dragon whatever helm is not useful. You can have a terrifying mask of V since you don't cause fear. The corrosive blade is good. And power stone, wand of jet also on Toxide. I guess you can have the wand of jet as well. Alright, that looks good. Gotta give that Warlock Augmented Weapon to somebody, most likely to Metastorm if he doesn't die. Alrighty, Toxide. We're gonna go right here. Have we had a single regular Skaven Stance Ambush succeed yet? Not sure that we have. No, either way. And it uh, continues not succeeding. Anyway, our food is in a pretty good place right now, so we are free to use it up on this. Will we need 11? Probably not, but what we will need is to reduce enemy and numbers sufficiently, so gotta do what you gotta do. Pyrrhic victory. We're mostly Skaven slaves. Got a little bit in the way of clan rats, however, and uh, let's hope that's enough. Because those Fire Leech Bolas are gonna do a number on us. Honestly, the, the <laughs> if the roles were reversed, I'd be confident the Fire Leech Bolas could kill off our army, but let's see. Alrighty, here we go. The mutant looking pretty good with all of that, uh, uh, with all of that tech gear on him, and uh, can't wait to see him on a Doom Wheel or a, uh, or a Doom Flare, depending on what exactly his army is going to look like. Besides, there will be other mutant clones to find later on. Anyway, here we go. Uh, just a pile of skinks versus a pile of uh, various rats. We have like twice as many Skaven slaves as uh, the uh, clan rats, mind you, but that's is very much appropriate for a, a Skaven army. Now, the Skinks are still not to be underestimated, especially the uh, uh, especially the Javelin cohorts. They do have a lot of skirmishers, which aren't going to be quite as threatening, uh, but uh, more importantly than that, those Fire Leech Bolas are going to be a major threat to the entire army, so we'll have to watch out for that. Now, we are going to reposition ourselves to get towards the enemy line, and while we do that, uh, we did reach the engagement threshold this time around, so obviously we'll be doing the hour-long episode for this particular episode, and the engagement threshold stands 500 likes and 70 comments, and the next episode will be an hour long as well. Now, as you can see, we're starting to battle off by using all of our menaces below. The reason here is not to actually do damage, though they are doing a teensy bit of damage, but rather to force the Fire Leech Bolas to waste as much of their ammunition as possible. They do have decent ammunition, but our, I think this is the third use of the menace below has forced them to waste about 40% of their ammo and we started with a fair few uses of this so we got a fair few more uh, available to us and hopefully we can deplete most of the enemy's ammunition don't really care about the uh, skink skirmisher ammo and stuff like that as uh, well we have way way and I mean way more skaven slave slingers uh, than needed to destroy a simple unit of uh, skink skirmishers but once again those fire leech bolas could cause absolute havoc and our army. Honestly, if it was, uh, once again, if the roles were reversed, I'd be very happy with this number of uh, Fire Leech Bolas against a pile of Skaven. So, anyway, keep going with those menaces below. We don't really need to uh, see them 
play too much because it's not really a proper fight and they route pretty much immediately upon contact with the enemy or especially on contact with those fire leech bolas all right come on come on fire there we go yes keep wasting that ammunition on those disposable clan rats we will of course leave at least a few uses of the menace below available to us for when the fight actually happens and just like two or three, just want to use up the rest to get that ammunition and waste it. Looks like this Fire Leech Bowl is down to about 15% of it and might actually run out before the battle starts. Unfortunately, this one is more or less fine. We will drop a nice Warp Lightning on the pile of uh, skinks and that are getting distracted by these units of uh, summoned clan rats. And follow it up with a second Warp Lightning as well. Gotta start that Warp Lightning spam. It's such a big part of a Skaven campaign, whether Pestilence or not. Even if you are missing the Pestilent Birth, and even if the Pestilent Birth, or Breath rather, uh, Birth is better, but anyway, uh, Pestilent Breath would probably be much more effective against these little tiny skinks since they have a, a fairly wide area and a, a numerous... Uh, well, 160 units. Not as many as uh, Skaven slaves or clan rats, mind you, but still a fair few. Anyway, it looks like the enemy is finally at last irritated enough to move towards us. Uh, the uh, two units of Fire Leech Bulls on the right flank are pretty much depleted, though this one is pretty much still okay. And we'll begin dropping those bolas first on our heroes and then on our slingers and clan rats. The slingers, however, will focus them down. Looks like the bombs come down in the middle of uh, one of our units of Skaven slave slingers, and rather than uh, rather than actually directly fire upon the slingers, it looks like the Fire Leech Bullets want to touch down upon them. This is kind of an interesting strategy, as against the Skaven Slave Slingers, they should be fine, even if the uh, Fire Leech Bullets or the Pterodon Riders, rather, are super fragile. They're not so fragile they can't fight Skaven Slave Slingers in melee, because literally anything, including zombies, can outfight Skaven Slave Slingers in melee. Otherwise, it looks like the big old piles of units are... Man, look at these hordes of units in this early game. It's absolutely fantastic. They're definitely gonna have to bring some uh, uh, some additional armies with Skaven Slaves and Clan Rats, even in the late game, because it's just too fun seeing these absolutely massive battles and getting casualties on your own side as well. I think we're going to have a lot of fun when we inevitably start fighting Luther Harkin because he's also going to have piles of units and they'll be gunning the uh, Skaven Slaves and Clan Rats down as we choke the barrels of their guns with our dead and similarly force them to run out of ammunition. Anyway, we got more rats where that came from, and even though the Fire Leech Bullets have uh, joined the fray, looks like they are starting to take a little bit of damage. Uh, this one's down by about 20% of its HP, and I think the other one... I don't... I've lost sight of it now. Oh, there it is. Uh, it's at 30% HP left, which is pretty good. Balance of Power is at about 80% in our favor now. Looks like some of the skin cohorts are running. Uh, some of the clan rats, I'm sure, are doing at least a decent bit of damage, and of course our hero are running around in the middle of all of this somewhere. They're actually trying to hunt the uh, Pterodon Riders with Fire Leech Bolas as they touch down and continue annoying those uh, Skaven Slave Slingers. Pretty good choice. Uh, it's uh, rare to see the uh, uh, rare to see the Pterodon Riders fight in melee, although the AI does tend to use them like this. Certainly a lot more than the player. And man, the fact that uh, this is kind of on the other side, because uh, uh, I'm just remembering I'm back the uh, Croc Gar campaign where Tic Tac Toe's aerial army took like three or four Skaven stacks at a time and just did not care, just completely obliterated everything that looked at them. That army was so incredibly nasty, but generally speaking, aerial armies are really nasty against the AI as it often doesn't bring enough, uh, uh, doesn't bring enough anti-air, especially with certain factions that don't have a lot of anti-air available to them, generally speaking. Anyway, it looks like this particular uh, uh, faction doesn't have enough anti-ground available to it either, whether that be just the regular Skaven or the Menace Below, as the Bounce Power continues as shifting 
further to our side. Finally, it's time to use uh, that ludicrously awesome or overpowered spell, but only against aerial units, Howling Warp Gale. And it's also very cheap, so uh, the uh, poor Pterodon Riders are stuck in the air and are getting hit with all of those slingers until they're brought down and destroyed to a skink. I was saving that, was hoping we could catch multiple Pterodon Riders with one use of it, uh, but alas, it never happened, so I eventually ended up using it on the one. The enemy Lord had a single unit of Saurus guarding it, which have been in the middle of the fray the entire time. They're certainly not going to rout or take damage like the uh, skink units are, or were, or did, because most of them are destroyed now. <laughs> in fact, it's only the Saurus Old Blood, the Saurus Spears, and the Skink Chief that are still fighting. Which also doesn't make sense. I do believe these Saurus Warriors are, or Sur yeah, Saurus Spears, are unbreakable as well. Uh, I don't know whether this is a proximity to Itza or whether this is something that Gorok does, I just don't remember, but, uh, well, we'll deal with it. Man, Unbreakable Saurus. That's a, uh, that's a nasty combo, but all good. Unbreakable or not, every single Saurus would have had to kill like a hundred rats to, uh, to make it count for the number of Saurus that the enemy has here, and the Slingers will still dish out damage. Looks like the Old Blood is uh, finally done, leaving a pile of rat corpses behind him, but there's just too many rats. And now, just a matter of time until the last of the Unbreakable Saurus come down. Those slings must be so irritating. And just hundreds of them at all times, especially now that they're no longer focused on the, uh, uh, focused on the Pterodon Riders. And I think that went well in the sense that uh, we were able to achieve what we wanted with uh, forcing Moa two of the Pterodon Riders to waste almost all of their ammunition, as otherwise the enemy would have gotten a lot, and I mean a lot more mileage out of them. I, uh, I remember always getting like hundreds of thousands of damage and uh, just ludicrous numbers of kills on those bolas in my Krokgar campaign. Anyway, it looks like the last of the Unbreakable source is still fighting or attempting to do so, but completely surrounded. Uh, by the rat hordes now and ooh nice leaping jump from one of the clan rats takes it down and gives the battle at last to us fantastic and uh, you gotta love the uh, all the fights uh, in the illustrian blood bowl All right, I guess uh, the problem with, uh, I mean, uh, that was relatively even in the sense that uh, they lost about half their army. We took some casualties, relatively even. Uh, the problem is we can't chase them down because they run too fast. I should have built some plague monks, uh, at least a couple for that purpose, but I wanted to save the money. Oh, well, we'll sell them off. Maybe we can get an ambush going or scaven ambush stance going on. Hey, don't go through the trees. Oh, you had to go through the trees, didn't you? Uh, that's gonna be kind of a problem, potentially, but nonetheless. Gotta kill him off. Let's hope it works. Come on, ambush this time. Probably could have leveled and now, now we get the ambush. Alright, so a couple of the clan rats will die. These are unshielded clan rats and we're in the process of replacing them anyway, so we just don't care. Uh, sell those off. And, of course, you no longer have the movement range to go back to Oishul. Hmm, now that's a question. I suppose we could put you, Toxide, into Oishul. The Mutant... You should be safe on this side, so go right here. Assuming that the lizards don't attack you, this guy can't reach you because of the zone of control exerted by Oishul. Main issue would be if he goes after the Sentinel of Time, but there isn't much we can do about it if he tries. Except possibly get a mage on field just in case. Ooh, Brass Cleaver, hello. That's a decent pickup. And so is the Forbidden Rod. That's a double decent pickup. In fact, that Forbidden Rod is immediately going to Mr. I Like to Regenerate, a.k.a. Lord Skrulk. At least until he gets the, uh, uh, he gets uh, the, oh, the Libra Bubonicus goes into this slot, okay. Forbidden Rod. Lovely. Uh, we'll deal with that guy in a moment. We will put Metastorm into this army, we'll probably swap them out a bit after. Uh, the Mutant... 
You're definitely going to be using a lot of weapons teams, but for now I'd like you to get Root Marcher and get some spells as well. You can spam a little bit of Warp Lightning. I mean, you're all going to spam Warp Lightning. Good. Then, what we'll want to do is probably summon another either Warlock Master. Probably the Warlock Master is going to be the better one. Target on rage plus 50% for spells. Bonus versus large plus 100% at the cost of minus or plus 100. Ha! Huh. That actually would be quite interesting on like a doom wheel. Hmm. Then again, the doom wheel is good in range as well. Nonetheless, I kind of like this idea. Although the 50% range increase for spells is also pretty good. The warlock masters seem to be getting some good stuff, eh? And the campaign line of sight, too. And the spell resistance helps with the miscast. Bonus versus large, plus 100. Doesn't help against the dwarfs, admittedly. You know what? I'm going to go for warp binoculars. And... Oh! You're a warlock engineer. My bad. Well, I actually still like that. I thought you were a lord. I didn't even realize we had options for engineers. Mm hmm. Anyway, we'll need a lord either way. And more lord master. We got cooldown for spells again. Could double up on it. Hello, Scorched Fur gives us that... Uh, uh, ooh, unstoppable charge for Doom Flayers. I was gonna look forward to a Doom Flayer army. I can't say no to that. Let's go Ominous Rumblings. We can we can get some use out of you. Alright, and then maybe we'll put Stunkrich into the Mutant's army, at least for a bit. We'll see. All right, uh, this is just to potentially defend the Sentinel of Time. Master Engineer. Since Oishel has a bunch of uh, garrison units, I expect they won't be attacking that, or at least I doubt that they will. Talkside, I'd like you or your chieftain, actually. Alert watch for you. Uh, let's get you that Warlock Augmented Weapon. Uh, we can have you carry the Shadow Magnet Trinket, maybe. Mm, anything else here? I guess we'll give you the Dragon Helm for now. We'll probably delete it and turn it into something more useful. We don't have the option. Until later, you can have the Dawnstone so you don't die. And you... Eh, keep the Corrosive Blade. Don't the Engineers get to poison via something anyway? Specimen Collector, Weapons Engineer... No, not this. Not Brass Orb. I swear they got an ability that gave them poison attacks anyway, but I could be wrong. Hmm. Maybe it's just tickets, guys. I don't know, but I suppose it doesn't really matter. Uh, the Brass Cleaver is going to go to Skrullki, or at least it's going to go to one of Skrullki's minions, presumably. He currently has a Sword of Strife. Yeah, let's give it to... I don't know. Let's give it to this Plague Priest for now. Slice in the Pox Preacher. Slice in and dice in. All right. That, I believe, is good. So, we're going to see if there's any more buildings to build. Uh, we could upgrade Schlansek for 3,000. We will definitely want to upgrade the Weapon Burrow and just hope that they can't take the Sentinel of Time. And the Capes... Yeah, let's upgrade the Citadel of Dusk, why not? Why not? And get the food upgrade here as well. Good. We got plenty of food coming. Ask, we just upgrade Schlansek as well. Pretty unlikely that anybody will ever reach it, because as soon as Oxyodal is out of the picture, we can send Lord Skrulk up this way. Alright, skip, skip, and turn. Let's see what those Dowie do. What do Dowie do? Well, looks like Oxyodal is moving towards us. Interesting. Should be some fun times for Skrulky. Will the dwarfs deign to attack... Oishal or besiege it. I doubt it. Now they're gonna stand outside it. You know what I should have done? I should have built some units. I was expecting them to attack, but then they didn't. Uh, the mutant gets a new trait. Income from all buildings plus 10% faction wide on start. You know what? I don't trust this. On the other hand, uh, it's always sensible to stay on the good side of your betters. Flayed tail. Characters or a leadership effect minus three. I would get this if it was for a little bit of a better weapon. It's only six turns, right? Hmm. I'm gonna risk it. I don't want the I don't want the leadership reductions. I'm just gonna hope it doesn't screw us. Let them fight over it. 
Also, let's let's give this a read. Let them read over it. During a feast, as enemies are consumed, the paunches of their peers are measured with envious eyes. One of your warlords boasts rather too loudly of the scavenge hall he has discovered, within which sits a relic of great value. Yeah, not really a relic of great value, so let them fight over it. All right, now you need to be destroyed, and hopefully we can do that. Uh, Stun Critch, come to this army for now. What are we looking at here? Uh, I was hoping Skrolki could reach this, but alas, he cannot. I guess we're going to go into Encamp Stance right here, just to heal up. And then you... Hmm. Probably go around. We can pop them both into a non encamp stance later, but obviously if they get attacked without a scroll key present, then they'd get destroyed, which we can't risk. How is our next plague, Kevin? One turn. All right, got to get that up and running. Although, you know what? Maybe we'll save it for when we get this. Four more turns and we start powering up the poxes. Kugath Finder, you know where you're going. Uh, right here, right? This is the sea land that I was thinking of. Yeah. And it's also the sea lane we'll take to invade Cathay. Not quite yet, but as well, soon as we can. All right, I guess we gotta fight some dwarves. We can't just leave them here. And they are in raiding stance, which means their battle vigor is winded. That's a lot of artillery pieces, but well, hmm, I guess they're still probably too damaged. The fact is, if they're raiding like this, they don't want to attack us, which might mean if we have, ah, uh, we don't have the money to recruit the uh, plague monks though. We do, however. Oh, these they, they take two turns too. Damn, we need money. I'd love to delete some of these units, but we don't really have the ability right now. Hmm. I mean, we can kill the dwarf warriors and the miners. The grudge throwers that have me concerned, especially with this army damaged as it is. But you know what? Nonetheless, uh, let's do this. You talk side, or wait, who do we attack with? I guess we attack with the mutant. Mutant, grab the grab Meta Storm from here. These guys are not in range, so we're gonna have to leave the settlement. We're going to move Toxer in, and just in case the dwarfs run, we're gonna pop you into March Stand so that you can catch up. More single entities is gonna be real helpful. Mutant, uh, did I give you guys that brass cleaver? I didn't give anybody the Brass Cleaver, did I? Oh, I did. Uh, now nah, you have that Warlock Augmented Mev weapon. You're gonna need it to get rid of that Guild Master. Alright, let's give this a try. Uh... He's not gonna run, and we once again didn't get an ambush going, but oh well. Max out the Menace below. We've got artillery to hopefully annoy very, very much. Go. Alrighty, Horned Rats will indeed. Here we go, it would not be a Skaven campaign, or at least not an appropriate Skaven campaign, without getting a little fighting against the Dowie, especially in the early game. I'm certain we'll see more of them as we confederate the other great clans over the course of the uh, over the course of the campaign, but a little bit of a preview for when we inevitably eventually invade Eight Peaks and Karazakarak. Now, since it worked so well against the Lizardmen and their Fire Leech Bolas, we're gonna do the same thing with the Menace Below spam on the enemy artillery pieces. Uh, looks like the uh, unit of Clan Rats got very heavily damaged, well, at least heavily damaged, by some of the miners with blasting charges, satchel charges. It unfortunately did not do enough damage to prevent them from seeing off at least one of the four artillery pieces. Crews. They are dwarfing crews, so they're still gonna be, well, maybe not okay in fighting, and not to the degree of a goblin hero, perhaps, uh, but uh, certainly... And they'll fight a little bit. 
Not enough, however. Uh, looks like one of the artillery pieces is out and three to go. Not to worry, though. I'm willing to bet we have a lot more menaces below available to us, and then the enemy has artillery pieces. And if it wants to chuck a few satchel charges at us and uh, potentially hit a few of its own units, well, it's welcome to do that as well. Anyway, uh, menace below uh, number two. This time going for the bolt throwers. Admittedly, the bolt throwers aren't going to be a huge threat to us, as we noted in the... Uh, uh, as we noted in the Imra campaign, the uh, dwarven, uh, the dwarven engineers are not capable of making a good bolt thrower compared to the elven engineers, which is also funny. Uh, but anyway, they should still be knocked out. And besides, they could uh, potentially target our lords and heroes in this particular round. Looks like the bolt throwers are nearly out, and then there will be two: one more bolt thrower and one more grudge thrower as well. And this is probably the time for the AI to have set up a nice boxy formation to protect those artillery pieces, but alas, the AI isn't going to do it. I'd say that you could, in theory, program the AI or the Dwarfen AI specifically to uh, do the whole Dwarfen box thing, but the thing is, it's not going to work well against a player who has access to spells and would just obliterate said box with spells or otherwise with artillery. And the Skaven have pretty solid artillery of their own, after all. Although, funnily enough, in Lustria in particular, Skaven artillery isn't as good as it is in a lot of the other sort of places in the world, mostly because Lustria has a tendency to have all those hills and jungles all over the place, which do interfere a lot with, in particular, the Warp Lightning Cannons. Great tip about the uh, Red-Eyed Skaven mod, incidentally. I uh, definitely, uh, like the, uh, definitely like the look. And since it's a simple graphical mod, we don't have to worry about it corrupting the campaign and uh, uh, forcing it to be uh, forcing it to be cancelled. Though that hasn't happened in a long time, but mostly because I've been avoiding certain mods that aren't updated quite as quickly as this. But oh my lord, that poor unit, uh, that poor poor unit of clan rats. Well, that unit is done for. Uh, though it looks like the enemy did do what, like 10% damage to one of the dwarf warrior units with it. Not so bad. And the Dwarf Warriors of Great Weapons took some damage to the Clan Rats as well. Ooh, that time you're going to do more damage to your own units and expend more of your ammunition once again. Menace below, gotta love it. And that's just the nature of fighting the Skaven. Uh, once again, we have tons and tons of rats available to us, and they're moving onto the field now, and uh, setting up their formations, but also the enemy army will be continuously harassed and harried by the uh, non-stop Menace Below summons. Anyway, here we go again. Another grudge thrower is the target. The uh, blasting charges come in, but the ammunition comes down, and not a single unit has yet engaged with the dwarfs. And this is absolutely necessary because our army is composed of like 10 units of clan rats and 20 units of Skaven slaves and in a straight up melee it's uh, it's gonna be very tough to deal with dwarfen units generally speaking. Anyway, I think... If not the last artillery piece, oh, one, two, three, yep, no, that was indeed the last artillery piece, the Dwarfen crews are done. Do a little bit of annoying of the remaining enemy units, like the uh, Corlers, and it's time to start moving the rest of our army forward, now unthreatened by those grudge throwers. If the enemy wants to waste more quarrels and more blasting charges on what other uses of the uh, menace below we have, they're more than welcome to it as well. I'm a little bit jealous of that uh, minigun of the uh, uh, of the Dwarfen Guildmaster, but we'll have the uh, we'll have the rattling guns on field before you know it. And frankly, the Skaven can better can make a better uh, can make a better device anyway. Granted, it's going to be like. 20 times more prone to explode, probably like 100 times more prone to explosions uh, than the Dwarfen device, but nonetheless. Nonetheless. Alright, looks like more blasting charges are wasted. The Guildmaster will still have plenty of ammunition and has gotten 32 kills on uh, to his name. We are going to reposition our army not here, but here so that we come down from the hillside rather than uh, where the enemy has the advantage, but at last it is time to charge forth or surge forth. The Skaven Slave Spears will lead the charge as they always do so that they can die in droves so that the clan rats can dish out some damage. And protect the Skaven Slave Slingers, which are a big part of our damage dealing capabilities in the early game. Alright, Skaven Slaves. 
And you probably won't survive the charge against the uh, Dwarf Warriors, but if the Dwarf Warriors want, or if the uh, Dwarf and Miners rather want to chuck a few more blasting charges at you and uh, hit a few of the uh, Dwarf Warriors, I'm perfectly happy to see them do that as well. There we go, great axes versus basically tattered rags and uh, crude spears for the Skaven slaves. But they're doing what they're supposed to do. And more of the enemy ammunition wasted, and once again, more blasting charges hitting uh, those uh, dwarfen units. The brawl, however, is going to last a while, at least over on this side where there isn't much Skaven Slave Slinger support. The Slingers will be targeting the Dwarf Warriors with great weapons and the Miners, things that don't have shields. And of course, the Skaven Slave Slingers, I think, have one armor-piercing damage. They're going to do very, very little damage to certain of these units, but the sheer number of them will make certain that eventually their numbers start to tell. All right, these miners are going to... Well, there's about 30% of their HP. It's once again, it's going to take a while. But we can help out a little bit with the occasional warp lightning right into the middle of the enemy formation. It does look like the dwarfs are smart enough to attempt to flank us, and we don't have a lot of melee units left to protect the flank, so we do send just the one repositioned from the front line while these Skaven slaves continue to fire. Ooh, I like the shadows. The, uh, the sort of uh, green light that we've got against the units. It's pretty neat. And the lights of the uh, miners... well, lights. Lanterns, that's the one. Mining lanterns? Do mining lanterns have, like, a, a special name, or are they just lanterns? But anyway, uh, let's uh, let's continue the Skaven Slave Slinger work. Uh, looks like the bounce power is at about 80%, maybe 90% in our favor. The pile of lords has moved through the enemy line of miners with blasting charges and is now giving chase to the enemy mm, guild master, led by the chieftain, who should be able to take the guild master and melee. There we go, whack away at him. Even the Grace here is, uh, is here to help. It's nice to see these various uh, uh, single uh, entities, lords and heroes, available to us fighting. Not just the clan rats. Looks like the guild... or clan rats and Skaven Slave. The guild master is down to about half HP. His army uh, very much in trouble as well. The uh, dwarf warriors with great axes starting to run out of HP under the relentless onslaught of those slings. And you gotta love how cheap these things are, considering the Skaven, the Skaven have a great economy, but it's kind of in a weird position where you need a lot of uh, buildings and stuff. So we just gotta level every settlement to tier 3, because every single building will make them money, and just a tiny bit of money. Alright, there we go, that minor unit is done for the enemy guild master, a couple more hits, and well, it looks like he is shattered, and with him, so is the dwarven host, done as well. Very, very nice. Certainly took some damage. This clan rat spear unit is... I actually wonder whether it's summoned unit or not. It does have a veterancy rank to it, but that might have been a unit of summoned units that... A uh, unit of summoned units uh, that uh, gained a rank. I'm not sure. I suppose it doesn't matter over much. At the end of the day, pretty much any number of clan rats and Skaven Slave Slingers are sacrificable to achieve the goals that we have here. Mutant, bring down the enemy lord. Ooh, but it looks like Toxis? Toxide? Toxer? Toxide. Uh, gets the, uh, <laughs> uh, gets the kill. Good job there, Gracier. You gotta prove yourself because the Plague Monks don't like you very much, so if you want to stick around, you gotta do good work. Alrighty, beautiful work, my ratty little friends. We destroyed the enemy army fairly well. The menace below helped quite a lot with getting those artillery pieces off of the map, and then the rest of the army was easy pickings afterwards. We're gonna sell off because we need the money, because we lose in money, at least for now. Especially with all the lords and heroes we suddenly had to summon, then we'll move in to destroy this army, hopefully for good. Beard thing sacrifice. I assume this means plus eight, not plus four twice for some reason. Ooh, Toxide just picked up a Book of Assure, and I am sure, I'm sure, uh, that uh, Skrull needs that. Or at least one of his uh, minions. Book of Assure, please. There you go. 
Lovely. Uh, Ixious Triads and Teeth Breakers Rattling Guns unlocked. Beautiful. As soon as we have money, the mutant is gonna get those rattling guns. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Accidentally misclicked and had that guy move suddenly. Uh, you three are all going to attack this. And what? It'll kill off a couple of unshielded clan rats. Well, we're periodically losing those unshielded clan rats, but that's fine. All right, nice. And we'll sell them off. Not the not the unshielded clan rats. Scrying stone, damage resistance, and leadership and ambush increase chance. Yeah, sure. Talk, sir. I'd love to have you continue helping out, but for now I think you're too expensive, so we're going to get you off the field. We will keep the guy with the warp binoculars, however, and keep leveling him. So you can enter Mutant's army. Mutant, you're going to move back to Oishul. This guy, I assume, won't be able to reach us here. Uh, talk side, you're going to go here. And you are going to leave this army and then join those guys afterwards. Talk, sir. Goodbye for now. I'm sure we'll see you again. Talk side, not to be confused with talk, sir. You sit there. Now, we do have a little bit of cash. I... Ooh. Okay, you know what? I think we'll pop the dominating scheme next, get that recruitment cost reduction by 30%, and then pump out a few of the elite units. Some death globes, some poison winds, maybe even the rattling guns and some plague claws. That'll make for another army, a second army, that'll be strong, rather than having to rely on... Uh, on a Lord Skrulk. We will, however, keep pumping out those Skaven slaves. There's really no need, reason not to. Because they're so cheap and effectively cost us nothing. Just build those. And you... Oh. Build some more. Do we have sufficient slingers? Can you ever have sufficient slingers? Build some more slingers. And then we'll uh, do other stuff. Because those guys don't cost really anything to uh, recruit either. Now. Lost Valley. We could... Ah, oh, okay, no, we're not upgrading that. Uh, Southern Sentinels and Mangrove Coast, once again, I think, and not. Uh, do we have to keep an eye out on that public order? Because we don't have the... Uh, we don't have the capacity to come out here and deal with the enemy uh, rebellions at the current time. But that may change. Let's hope that these two are willing to attack Lord Skrulk without backup. I feel like they should. Also, you just hit rank 12. Oh, that's why we unlocked that stuff. Uh, we could go for the Warpstone tokens, but we are not maxed out in Winds of Power anyway, so not as much of a need to do so. I guess we'll just go for Evasion for you. You are kind of in the middle of the fighting pretty much at all times. All right, let's see if uh, Xeodal will attack us then, shall we? Or whether he'll return to the Sinhal Monolith. Which is getting an upgrade. That is getting some upgrades. Also, how are you doing? You're good. Ooh, you have a mission for us to kill Oxyodal, I wager? Yes, I should have picked up the missions earlier, as, uh, well, once again, we do want some of their units. Anyway, Anasan skill points, building upgrades on the turn. I imagine it'll be at least a few turns before Itza comes for us. I'd really love to jump on that uh, Liber Bubonicus, and yes, indeed, they will at Oh, I was not expecting that. They're going after the settlement garrison in Moloch here, with Lord Skrulk reinforcing. Now, unfortunately, I take it what happens here is that the enemy came okay, menace below. Uh, I mean, yeah, we'll come and reinf into reinforcements. They'll probably kill off these guys. Hmm. And the last go. Oh, we don't get a speech from our Zinchen allies. That's a little bit unfortunate, but uh, oh well. What can you do? Here we go, and ooh, we got a pretty darn cool map in the Southern Chaos Waste. Uh, definitely love the dramatic lighting and all the uh, sort of uh, skull-carved mountains and all of that sort of stuff going on. We got a Chaos Gate overlooking the background as well. All very nice and cinematic, and the Chaos Gate is overlooking a ruin here. Lovely. 
Look at all that. And we are arrayed against a pretty darn decent force belonging to Oxyodal and his two armies, led by the Skink himself. Uh, the, well, <laughs> our allies are pretty limited in number here, so I don't know how long they will be able to hold, but we will do our best to help. We got 50 seconds until our reinforcements arrive on the field, and unfortunately for us, the, uh, uh, the army abilities that we have, like Menace Below, which we can see here, uh, like Menace Below and like like the festering pools and whatever other army abilities we have aren't available to us until our army actually makes it on the field so we can't help our Zinchin friends immediately on the bright side Forsaken are a pretty solid early game unit and mid game unit and well according to Gullator have spawn all game unit but anyway uh these skinks will probably have a tough time getting through their armor Though the uh, Chameleon Stalkers do hit pretty hard with 35 weapon strength for 120 units. Yeah, 14 armor piercing, pretty decent there. Anyway, at last we make it onto the field, which allows us to start summoning a little bit of help. Here come the Menace below, here comes our little Vortex ability. I'm still not entirely sure what kind of damage it deals, but the enemy will be forced into sitting here for quite the while. Forsaken are joined by Furies in terms of helping fight. And the Furies will be able to dish out a decent bit of damage. There we go, and all that Skaven stuff by the looks of it is helping out pretty decently, and yeah, look at that, the uh, Vortex is looking like it is doing damage, as the units that are caught up in it are uh, nearly destroyed, and the units that are not caught up in it are fighting quite well still. We are going to be a while making our way towards this, however, so we just gotta keep helping our, uh, our friends out. All right, lots more skinks where that came from, at least in the, for, well, in just the first army. And, of course, Oxyodal has arrived on the field with his own proper stack, which has a couple of dinos in it as well, which we will have to be uh, decently wary of. These guys are definitely still fighting, however, and we are trying to book it forward with uh, Lord Skrulk and his new units. Plus, ah, look at our, uh, look at our piles of Plague Claws that we now have available. I'm just glad that the AI doesn't have a menace below available to it to uh, uh, to hit those as well. And just as they make their way onto the field. And what are you doing, cultist? Go help out. Maybe he's trying to head towards this uh, source of old blood. Mm, or he's running past. Okay, I don't know what he's doing, but I guess it uh, doesn't matter over much. Uh, looks like a unit of skink cohorts has been overrun by the clan rats, and while our forsaken friends keep holding the line, our clan rats from the menace below keep hitting those skinks in the back. Which is nice, causing those morale shocks to the skinks. And unlike the Saurus, the uh, skink morale is uh, relatively messed, so we should be able to make them rout and maybe even keep our uh, allied army alive, or at least some of them. Does look like the blue horrors are beginning to melt away. The reinforcements have come in, so a herald of Zinch has arrived. And it looks like we've at last made our way into range, so we hit the pile of skin cohorts with a nice pestilent breath. And by the looks of it, the shout, well, fairly decent damage to two units at the same time. Lovely. Not to worry, though, we got more Pestilent Breaths where the hat came from. We're going to follow one up with another as the pile of uh, Plague Priests head towards the enemy lord of this first army. At the same time, it looks like Oxyodal is making his way forward with his main stack. Oh, he has three dinos because he has a Skink Oracle, which is mounted on a Troglodon, so we've got, uh, well, we've got that to deal with as well. Well, we'll see how that works out for the enemy. Now, we gotta keep in mind that all the chameleon skinks in the enemy army are in stock, so we can't actually see these. For example, these ones are all hidden, which is why there are no... Uh uh, there are uh, no projectiles moving towards them. They do get revealed roughly here, so we will be able to hopefully retarget them. But it also looks like they're going to be able to get a fair, fair few of their, uh, uh, their projectiles off as they run on in. Or at least they should. Huh. They didn't fire off their projectiles. Never mind. Well, sucks to be them. Uh, sucks to be them. It's going to be a glass cannon damage dealer versus glass cannon damage dealer as they face off against the, uh, the very, very angry plague monks. And they're angry because the uh, the chameleon skinks just don't have enough plagues on them. It's upsetting. It's upsetting to look at. 
I'm upset too. Anyway, uh, looks like the piles of uh, these skinks continue to surge forth, but we keep summoning menaces below, and now that Skrolki and his Plague Priests are moving forth, these units are all summoned units, so uh, we are using that Vermintide and sending it at the enemy army. Of course, this is the main stack, and this is where the fight will be, as the other stack has been pretty much destroyed by our summoned uses of Menace Below, and by, to some small degree, the help of our allies. And of course, all the abilities that we used on their army, rather than on, uh, uh, rather than our own army, or to help our own army here, so they should be damn grateful for it. Ooh, and it looks like the uh, Feral Basties have made their way in. I'm uh, gonna have to be careful about those, as the uh, regular Plague Monks aren't going to be able to pierce that armor. So we're going to have to try to wither it down to some degree. We already have, uh, uh, we already have some armor reductions going on, but we need more. We need access to some armor sundering, don't we? Hmm. I'm just wondering, do Skaven have anything, or at least is there anything Plague Monk adjacent that will give us a source of armor sundering in the roster that we could put in the uh, in Skrulki's army so we could stack it a little bit more? Gonna have to wait and see. Anyway, uh, all of the enemy units of Skinks that are supporting the enemy army in range are going to have to deal with our Plague Claws. And it is nice to have a proper pile of Plague Claws now. Before we had the Skaven Slave Slingers, of course, which were also doing uh, damage, but the, uh, well, them being replaced by the Plague Claws will work very much in our favor, especially as we continue to upgrade them and give them veterancy, increasing their capabilities, their damage, their accuracy, all of that sort of stuff. Plus, uh, there's a 20% reload increase uh, to their strength in the, um, in the Pox technology tree, which is relatively early. I think it's the second thing that you can get. Which means we should be able to power them up a non not insignificant amount fairly quickly. Anyway, the bounce power shifts are about 70% in our favor. Lord Skrulk and his Plague Priests are attempting to go after the two enemy Basties, because we don't have anybody else to do so. We also have our Blight Scabs Plague Pack, uh, who are in the same position, and trying to debuff and damage those Basties and help out the Plague Priests. Fortunately, all the enemy range units are having a pretty tough time with our just never-ending summons of clan rats. For every thousand rats you kill, we've got two thousand more. And of course, interspersed among them now is a the units of the uh, uh, the units of the plague monks that went to help out the Zinshin faction, but also the units of plague monks that were summoned. This is a pestilent birth summon of plague monks, so now uh, we can get additional plague monk summons as well, which is quite nice. Troglodon and Skink Oracle firing away and dishing out some melee damage. You gotta love these things; they're a nice addition to the uh, to uh, the lizard roster. We're pretty fun to play with in, in the Lizardman campaign as well, but they're going to have to uh, they're going to have to uh, get a little taste of their own medicine here. Alrighty, looks like the first of the Basties has finally gone down, or at least been shattered by Skrulki and his Plague Priests. Skrulki and the Plague Priests. It was on the bad name. Uh, the other Bastia is, of course, still fighting, but uh, I'm not so sure that it's going to be able to hold against the uh, Plague Pack and what we still have uh, going on. Mount Sparrow's at about 90. Oh, no, it will shift to 100% in our favor, and the enemy army will shatter, and the battle will be ours. And look at that, we even managed to preserve like four of our uh, allied Xinxian units. Oxyodal managed to get about 3,000 damage and 33 kills, really not all that much against a pile of Skaven. Uh, but... Personally, I've never been impressed with the range lords. I, I, I think most people haven't been impressed with the uh, range lords. So that's hardly surprising. But I suppose the sort of the game for Oxyodal, his power isn't his own ability to dish out damage, but uh, what he does for his faction and for his uh, uh, for his army. Anyway, with that, the enemy army breaks. We'll do our best to destroy whatever units we can, as I'm willing to bet that the enemy army won't be destroyed. <laughs> There's no way we bring down a Basti with the uh, Plague Claws, it was just, uh, I just wanted to see whether we could hit it. Oh, oh I saw one hit. <laughs> Alrighty, but that's not what the Plague Claws are meant for. It's similar to using a, uh, uh, a Hellstorm rocket battery on a Feral Basti, it just, it wouldn't hit a single rocket either. Anyway, we're gonna give chase to Oxyodal, but I don't think we'll catch him either way, and we'll catch him after the battle is done.
All right, there we go. Very nice. Scroll keys army starting to function without the need for a uh, uh, for a supporting stack. Got a decent amount of cash for our trouble, which we're definitely going to need as we're going to be recruiting. So sell those guys off, please. Oxyodal does survive. I don't believe. Ooh. Free Trickster's Helm, yes please. Uh, now I don't believe we get Oxyodal's defeat trait, but if we can catch him this turn, we still might. Depending on whether the uh, Flaming Scribes will actually chase him down or not, and I suppose which direction he went to. You want a defensive alliance is going to be a no from me. And... Kyurem. But why? But why? <laughs> Uh, I uh, did you just get cocky because we deleted that other little army? Okay, well, bad idea for you, good sir. Arch Plague Lord Nerglich, supreme ruler of Clan Pestilence, has decreed that the strength of the clan must grow, my lord. Yet we cannot merely breed our way out of this. You must ignite the power within the rod of corruption. Hey, 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 we can breed our way out of anything. How dare you? Anyway, uh, Rod of Corruption, good. Uh, ally mission successful, also good. And, oh, we do get the defeat trait. Lovely. Uh, ambush success and defense chance. And Vanguard deployment for Skrulk. That's actually kind of interesting. He's not super fast, or at the very least, he's not fast enough to take too much advantage of it. But I wouldn't say no to it. Uh, post battle loot kidnapper. There's that trickster's helm. Itza has confederated Shlanhwapek. Which is interesting, because these two were at war. If we could just have you declare war on Itza, that would be great. And then kill them both while they're fighting each other. At least that would be ideal. But anyway, it doesn't look like it's happening right now. Ian and Vermich. Ah, I was hoping they'd be able to kill off... Uh, that one of them would be able to reach Skrulk, but it looks like... Yeah, or Skrulk, Oxyola. It looks like we're too far away, which is a shame, because I would have loved for them to get the, uh, the defeat trade as well. But oh well, not a big deal. Uh, let's have Skrulk wipe them both out then. Like so. Skrulky. Kill A, and then kill B, and then... Oh, these already taken the Sinha Monoth. Oh, that's why they attacked. They lost their last settlement. Makes sense to me. Also, I forgot to put the uh, Razor Standard on the Blight Scabs Plague Pack, because I'm stupid. Out of result. All right, lovely. That's one, and we're not going to heal. Just keep taking money. We need to recruit all the... And an Armor of Destiny. Beautiful. Thank you, game. Another Dragon Helm. Well, well, well. Dragon Helm 1, Dragon Helm 2, fuse into a Brass Cleaver. Yes, ooh, getting good items now. Grolke, lose the armor of fortune, gain the armor of destiny. Then we're going to go for the dominating scheme for that recruitment, and then we'll do the Plague Pestilence scheme in five turns as soon as it's back up and running. It's a five-turn cooldown between... Yeah, okay, it's not so bad. Especially since the Plague guy... Pops on top of uh, Skrulk A and B. We got three turns anyway until we can complete the technology and start using these things. So we'll just need to do that when the time is appropriate. Skrulk E kill. Wait. You both in range now to leech debt XP and possibly get us some more items? Yeah, like so. And kill again. And sell off. And isn't it lovely? Enemy killed in battle, and Ghost of Pahuax destroyed our northern, or our southern, rather, uh, settlements are secured. Scroll key, you're heading out to sea immediately. And beautiful, you'll heal there. Ian, you unfortunately can't go to sea in your first turn. Vermich, do we delete you or do we keep you following? Once again, I do like you as a follower army. Because Ian can have his own actual stack. Vermich, because he is one of these... Uh, uh, frontline rats can be a follower army similar to this maniacal crazy. Yeah. Uh, slave attendance, that's inferior to frontline rat. And we have another frontline rat and Mr. Puston here who we can give our follower clan rats and other stuff to. Ooh, integrated weaponry. Bound spell, warp fireball, and armor piercing weapon damage. I like that too, but I still like encased warp engines a little bit better uh, just because I generally prefer to buff the army over buffing the lord. Hmm. 
Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> always interested to see what uh, what kind of traits we got going on. Uh, the mutant and co. You're gonna kill Hugrum Red Axe in a second, though. Frankly, there's not that many defenders at Thrice Cursed Peak. You might actually be able to take it after. No, well, maybe not after killing this guy, but uh, shortly. I would like Stunkrich to move into Mutant's army, who's at 18 out of 20. And the mutant with all of his weapons teams is after all going to need multiple warlock engineers. I don't remember what the optimal number is. Uh, people have done the math on this a bunch of times. I want to say it's three. I guess it, it also depends on what kind of units you have in your army. Like, I think, uh, like, if you do the math with all Gisales, it's going to be different than with all rattling guns. Oh, speaking of rattling guns, mutant. Oh, they're so expensive, but they're rattling guns. We gotta have them. We gotta have them, guys. Go. The teeth breakers. I don't know why I said it so workily, but... <laughs> All right, every marcher for you, sir. Mutant, you gotta level up as well, and we should probably level up Scroll Key. We're also out of time, or running out of it, uh, but uh, I want this dwarfing problem solved. So Musk of Fear, we'll do Warp Lightning next. Chieftain, go Tail Weapon, only real choice, and Warlock Engineer, go for... Standardized Firing Drill. Frankly, we don't have a lot of units that can benefit from it as yet, but since we have the weapons burrow, that's uh, definitely about to change. Uh, scroll key, you're level 13, which means, well, we could get Envoy of the Council for that Diplo with other Skaven. We gotta go for the Aura of Pestilence first. Frankly, we should probably get Voice of the Horned Rat as well, but... Yeah, armor, more armor reduction. The more we spam armor reduction, the better it will uh, just be, generally speaking. Anyway, I believe, assuming that we don't have... Okay, we do have some buildings. Chupayodal, go for the gold mining pit. Uh, actually, you know what I didn't check? Itza, no. I was wondering briefly if they were willing to peace out, because I would have been willing to do that while we killed off all of this. Hmm. The deserters of Katap are still fighting the Sentinels of Jeti. I don't know how strong they are. They have one settlement left. They're both kind of venturing into Rakarthi territory, which is probably not so good for either one of them. Uh, Kulkan plans. Back to you, Kent. Underducks. I guess we'll get the breeding pit. Eventually we'll need to replace all of these, but, you know, they make money, they make growth, they do good stuff. And this, eh, 301, not worth collecting income. I mean, I just wanted to check in case it became so. Go for the Warren. And I'm gonna hope that we have enough money remaining after all this to still construct what we need to construct. Uh, you're gonna go for the Taskmaster's platform. Or to recruit what we need to recruit. You know, leave the Knight to Forest Road because this is... Oh. Alright, let's do that. Uh, we're definitely gonna have negative income next turn, but what can you do? You gotta spend rats to make rats. And now the ambush works. Uh... <laughs> uh, I guess the question is, does the ambush actually help us in this situation? I'm not so sure that it does, maybe somewhat. It depends on how the enemy reacts to said ambush. They are in march stands either way, so they are going to get screwed just by virtue of it. Go. Alrighty, here we go. Last time we faced the dwarfs, we had less Skaven slaves, so we have even more disposable troops to send against them, plus the Warlock Engineer. <laughs> this guy gets hit in the head with that Doom Rocket. Fantastic. But that is the least of that particular dwarf's problems, as the main show for this particular battle will be our first unit of Rattling Guns. And man, do you got to love Rattling Guns. Definitely one of the uh, units that uh, brings so much joy to this game. I mean, the same thing is true of the, uh, of pretty much all these Skaven weapons teams. They're just so fun to watch. And there we go, we wind up and we begin to fire at last. The dwarves are going to have a very, very bad day, especially in ambush against rattling guns. Uh, these guys also get suppressed by it, so they're not getting the heck out of there as they continue taking volleys from the teeth breakers. Obviously, the clan rats and the uh, Skaven saves will also charge forth at the enemy, but this is really what we're interested in. 
All right, reposition ourselves a teensy bit with those rattling guns. Don't want to be gunning down droves of our own units. Or maybe we do. I don't know. This is the Skaven after all. And then go and fire again. All right, come on. Enemy units are moving, and there we go. Oh, yeah, I love that sound. Alrighty, looks like that unit of uh, Thunderers, and, well, frankly, it looks like it's getting multiple units at the same time. Uh, looks like a unit of Miners is attempting to escape, but getting absolutely ripped apart uh, by those rattling guns. Hardly surprising. They're down to about 20% of their HP and another volley. We'll probably knock them out. There we go. I feel like the rattling gunners have the most fun of all the uh, of all the units. Anyway, the uh, miners are done, and the rattling guns also destroyed the enemy artillery pieces that had started back here, and we're going to give chase to them. Looks like a decent pile of the enemy units are running. They, uh, well, they see the writings on the wall, and they know that they have no chance against this particular ambush. Uh, we are, however, able to chase down and force at least a few of their units into a melee, simply because the dwarfen units run too slowly. Looks like the uh, lord is attempting to escape with the two more units of dwarf warriors, but we'll begin to chase them shortly as well. Uh, the rattling gunners are running out of targets, so they're going to have to move forward and maybe try to focus these guys down as well. Thunderers are giving a fairly decent fight to the clan rats, but hardly surprising. And more doom rockets coming in from our uh, from our warlock engineer. Slingless firing down from our yeah, firing down from that hill there. And we're waiting for those rattling guns to reposition themselves and get back into the firing line. And yeah, it's a minor ambush, but yeah, it's all about the rattlings. All right, come on, we reposition ourselves, and it's time to fire again. There we go, and with the Doom Rocket and these slings coming down as well, and those poor Dwarf Warriors will shatter pretty much instantly as soon as they're hit by the Rattling Guns. Switch and fire again as this unit of Miners is still fighting, but by the looks of it, won't be fighting for too much longer either, as they will similarly get decimated, shaken now, and will probably be broken with the next volley. There we go. All right, and the... Oh, there's another unit of miners in here, but there won't be for long. Looks like we do manage to catch the other two dwarf units, or dwarf warrior units, and that were attempting to escape and the situation. This is a... Uh, uh, this is a summoned use of menace below, which we summoned in front of them to get them engaged, while other units of rats uh, ran up behind them and started stabbing away with those clan rat spears. And there we go. These two units are now trapped. The rest of the enemy column has been largely destroyed and by being pinned in place for the rattling guns and the slings, and it was just a matter of time of running the enemy down. We didn't even need our massive pile of reinforcing Skaven slaves, which are coming in led by Toxide in a second. Looks like the enemy lord is still running. Oh, shame. Shame to your ancestors. Leaving his entire throng to die. And die uh, they will. The bounce power shifts to about 95% in our favor. I think these are still the only, these two dwarf warrior units are the only ones left on the field and surrounded by rats from every side and interspersed within their formation as well. Gotta love that menace below summon. I think the glowing red eyes, uh, they, uh, they add, uh, you know, that sort of, uh, I don't call it a zombie effect, but one of the one of the nice things about fighting on dark maps for the vampire camps is that you can see the glowing balefire of uh, the, the eyes or the units of the uh, balefire braziers on the corpse carts, etc., etc., etc. And the Skaven's red eyes make that for another uh, sort of element to uh, giving a nice atmosphere for uh, the darker maps. Anyway, with that, the enemy army will shatter and the battle will be ours. The Teeth Breakers used up about 70% of their ammunition and had got plenty of kills for their trouble and plenty of damage as well. Obviously, we would want to upgrade their ammunition uh, like any rattling gun unit with the uh, Warlock Masters, or in, well, actually Warlock Engineers and such. Well, which will buff up their capabilities significantly. Anyway.
Ah, beautiful. 244 kills and 27k damage. Vast, vastly, and I mean vastly outperforming everything else. Very, very nice. I'm so happy we got those rattling guns on field and we'll get Mutant a couple more as soon as we can. Sell those off and uh, that'll allow us to recruit. The enemy lord attempted to escape, but that clearly didn't work out so well. Clan Squire Saboteur, Mechanic, and the Mutant has a Doom Flare. Well, that seems appropriate. Uh, let's see. Now, what we need to do is move to the edge of this territory, I imagine. We'll have to spend two turns recruiting, and what we will want to recruit is... All of this stuff. All of this super, super expensive stuff, but what can you do? We gotta do it while we have the, uh, while we have the opportunity. Alright, so, talk side. Oh, your stuff is full. Alrighty, uh, let's delete the Skaven Slave Spears. And we're probably not going to need the clan rats. We'll keep two. Delete you. The unshielded ones, I mean. Then, you still have one, two, three, four, five, six, probably seven, eight, nine, maybe three play claws to get the enemies to actually approach us. So we need nine spaces. Okay, well, we need to get rid of more stuff. Uh, Alright, get rid of... I hate to get rid of the clan or the Gaven Slave Spears, but... Uh, well, you got, or Slingers, rather, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, you're gonna go right here just in case this guy attacks. I sincerely doubt he will, but, you know. And then we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Can't afford any more. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, it'll take two turns, so we should get the money back. Oh, well, we could still actually get one Plague Claw. Hmm, is there any way to get 500 gold this turn? We got Finder. Okay, you certainly can't get 500 gold, but you can travel through the sea lane, so to, through the sea lane you shall go. Ain't no way there's a island, like a Skull Island, besides Skrulky. Is there set sail? Alright, I don't see one. There's an island right here, or a shipwreck right there, but not a Skull Island. Ooh, Altar of the Horned Rat has fallen to Itza. Oishul is safe, though, so we don't have to worry about it. I really would have preferred to get a couple more. Do we forego any of the Death Globes or the Bombardiers? I don't think we do. I just don't think we do. You're fine for now. Alrighty, uh... Yeah, we shouldn't, in theory, go negative, but just in case we do, for a turn... Let's see, Citadel of Dusk, you can get money for a turn. Call complaints for one turn. Ooh, minus nine. No, you can't. Uh, what are you at? You're at minus twelve? No, you can't either. <laughs> at least not for now. Not while we don't have an army nearby to deal with it. All right, let's just assume that this is going to be fine, because these guys are going to take two turns. We should also... Hmm... Uh, Probably start moving through Blastmaster pretty much immediately because we're going to be using, well, a bunch of units that uh, benefit from it. We have the main stuff. Oh, I guess we should get another point in Warp Lightning, eh? Also, we need rank 10 for Specimen Collector and that lovely casualty replenishment rate, but also the upkeep reduction for Giselles, Rattling Guns, Warp Fire Thrower, Weapon Teams. It doesn't include the... Hmm, the thrower guys. We can put them in a different army afterwards, after we get more uh, stuff for the mutant. Anyway, let's end the turn. And let's see if these guys react to it in any way, and get Skrulky up here. Oh. In fact... Hmm, no, okay, we probably wouldn't have time for it. I was about to say, in fact, we could do the Liber Bubonicus battle, but I guess we can save it for, uh, we can save it for next episode. But we will definitely do it next episode. I swear. Alrighty, Odd Powder Keg. Alright, this gives you the Flash Bomb, which is nice. Ooh, Toxide. Plague Claw Catapult and Warp Lightning. Yeah. Ooh, Growth for All Provinces for 30. And 4,000 gold. This is all good stuff, damn it. Uh... But I just can't say no to the Boom Master trait. I wish that it had been the mutant that had gotten us, but, uh, oh well, not a big deal. During a raid on a minor dwarf outpost, hey, that's where we're going. Uh, one of your lords captures a dwarf in Powder Hall. Sl suavely. That's swell and lovely. Um, Boom Master, give it to the lord. And we could put to Warp Lightnings in your, uh, Warp Lightnings and Plague Claw. Make you the artillery guy, Toxide. Give it to the lord. Although... 
Just out of curiosity, so Toxide is a Grey Seer of Ruin. There's nothing here in a Warlock Master's traits that actually helps artillery. It just helps the cons... well, not the constructs, but the weapons teams and the uh, techno sorcery stuff. Meaning we are pretty okay to make you an artillery guy. With other stuff, obviously, but uh, yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Boom, Master Toxud. I like it. All right, we need to maintain the money. As soon as these guys are on the field, that'll be minus a massive amount of cash. You know what? These only cost 64. <laughs> Probably no need uh, to delete them. I'm thinking that, yeah, what we will do is immediately do the battle for this, because it should give us 5,000 gold, which will stave off bankruptcy for a turn. However, we're going to do it at the start of next episode, because I'm going to call it here. Next episode, we destroy the dwarfs with even more weapon team goodness, and do the quest battle, and then start working on Itza, which should be fun. Stay tuned for it. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially to Threshold. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.